welcome to the end user report we are your hosts I'm Clarence and filling in this week for Jamal is Lisa hi everyone all right Lisa usually uh, is our stat girl uh, we, we've had her filling that role um, Jamal had some other obligations he said something about world of Warcraft something about a raid on the blood elves or I'm really not sure um, He's locked in a basement somewhere. That's all we know. Probably. We're probably bringing out the gimp on him right now. But in this week's show, uh, we're going to discuss the Rim playbook. And this is something that seems to have a, a lot of anticipation behind it. But like as we do many times, we're going to go ahead and uh, hit the back button. Last week we talked about the iPad 2. Um, and we did actually have a response from... Carly YouTube, she writes in and says, here's what I think. The iPad is not a replacement for your laptop or your computer, and it's not supposed to be. I can't see how anyone can be disappointed with what it offers. For the price it is for me, hands down the best for your money, and with iMovie being able to go large screen and the battery life and, a, and a, an outstanding app store, I will be buying it. One more thing, the resale value of the iPad is out of this world. I know people who are getting 550 for a 32 gigabyte. It's a win-win. Uh, so Lisa, for the first time on this side of the camera, what are your thoughts on uh, that response? Uh, well, uh, first of all, I completely agree with Carly YouTube. Um, I mean, everybody knows that Apple products are pretty much in a realm and league all of their own and uh, they set the bar for the tablets and you know the movie production and it's no secret that anytime you buy any Apple product it's hot off the presses from its initial release date um, consistently they've shown that they have pretty good durability um, not too many issues with regards to other than user error Meaning you drop your eye touch in a puddle. Nobody's really complaining about, geez, you know, I went to the app store and it crashed my whole program and now I can't listen to my Lil Wayne CD. What the hell? Alrighty. Yeah, um, she brings up great points. I can't disagree with anything that she says. And yes, the resale value is out of this world. Um, so yeah, she's 100% correct on everything that she says and you know just looking at the iPad and the marketing uh, and everything that it has to offer especially with a number of apps uh, it, it's really hard not to want one but let's move on uh, with why we're here today uh, today again we're talking about the RIM playbook and if you don't know uh, RIM is the company that's responsible uh, for Blackberry I'm gonna actually go over the uh, stats here uh, this thing is rocking a 1 gigahertz dual core processor, 1 gig of RAM, uh, full Adobe Flash 10.1 support, uh, built-in HTML5 support, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, uh, 3 megapixel high definition front facing camera, 5 megapixel high definition rear facing camera, uh, 1080p video, uh, it is also going to be uh, compatible with MPEG-4, WMV, also HDMI video out, micro USB and micro HDMI ports. It's got a 7 inch LCD touch display. Uh, clocks in at 0.9 pounds or 425 grams, whichever you feel more comfortable with. Also it's going to have 3G and 4G access. Uh, and it's also going to be rocking the BlackBerry Tablet OS. So, based on the stats and what you know of the device, what are your feelings on the RIM playbook? Ah, oh, oh, RIM, RIM, RIM. My love, my love. You're dying. RIM has this issue where, overall, my thoughts on. the BlackBerry playbook, is that obviously it is not the device that your high school or college age teenage child is going to come home and insist on $400 being cash advanced to them for. 
Um, that being said, RIM devices are really designed for the business market. Um, I think there will be too many performance issues like we've seen consistently with other RIM products, specifically server issues. The specs look great in terms of what this device could do, but as a business person, when I saw, for example, the video conferencing features that it allows you to do, we all know that RIM has had issues with their servers in the past. It was no secret that last year they had a huge issue because here they were selling storms and storm twos and curves to every girl who wanted a pink Barbie colored cell phone cover and every guy who wanted the matrix background on his phone and no sooner did these kids get their hot off the presses blackberry devices which were supposed to be cool and supposed to be hip then oh my god i can't get on facebook and it became national news and rim of course quickly released a statement saying we're aware of the situation it's a server issue and we're on it and they're quick to respond but they consistently have these issues more often than not and their solution is only to update to the newest version. Now that's great for college kids because as we all know college kids are consolidated in cesspools of filth and bacteria known as dorm rooms. That's true. And so they are all able to share this information. The truth of the story is is that when a business has an issue with their server they usually have one IT guy. Sometimes his name is Habib, sometimes his name is Jim Bob. Regardless, he's usually not central to the actual location of where the business is operating out of. It becomes cost ineffective to have to call in your IT guy because you think you're having an issue with your video conferencing software only to find out that it's really the server that allows you to do the essential things with what the tablet is designed for. Also, I know of business people who, while they like the ease of adding things into the calendar, will find that not everybody who are supposed to get the information get the information. And it becomes this issue of, well, how do we fix this? You go back to the primitive post-it notes. Would you really expect a business to pay $500 for something that may be temperamental when they could just invest in post-it notes? Interesting. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of surprised because uh, you have BlackBerry and you've been ever the outspoken supporter of RIM. And I'm actually going to go on the opposite side and disagree with you a bit. I actually think this is going to be a good device. I like the fact that it's smaller than the Zoom or the iPad 2. It makes it a much more portable device. From what I've seen of the OS, it looks solid. It's based, I believe, on uh, the QN, uh, QNX. Uh, operating system. Uh, I believe they use a similar kind of system in the space station and it is kind of uh, relative of what the internet is based on. Ooh. Now if there's one thing that is going to hold this device back I think is apps. Absolutely. Now I've heard rumors saying that the playbook is going to play nice with Android apps or nice with the Android marketplace and the fact is until I hear something from RIM confirming that, I'm going to just take it as, I'm going to take it with a grain of salt and think that it's just a rumor. For RIM's sake, I, I hope that is the case um, because as I've talked about, as Jamal talked about, really you can have a great piece of hardware, but if you don't have the software to run on it, people eventually are going to get tired of it or, or they're just not going to buy it. Uh, I've heard rumors that there's something around the nature of 4,000 apps that are compatible with the playbook, but it, it really it, it really seems unclear how many of those apps are actually tailor-made for for the playbook. And when I hear that, it makes me think of the Galaxy S tab and the issues that that ran into, uh, and really as we've seen mostly with RIM and BlackBerry, this is really more focused on the on-the-go business person. This really isn't focused on, you know, Teddy and her, his soccer mom, uh, you know, as far as that, that kind of device. Um, so, yeah, I think this is really more 
focus towards the business person and I give you a couple reasons why uh, one thing that they allow you to do with this is it's going to allow you to wireless, wirelessly connect to your BlackBerry smartphone, real-time access to your email, your calendar, address book, task list, and BlackBerry Messenger. Also, it's supposed to be allow, uh, supposed to uh, allow you to open up a secure window on your smartphone. So yeah, I think this is really more focused on corporate America as opposed to just the general population out there. Now, I did want to run this question by you because I actually thought you were going to go completely the other way with this because, again, you've been a big RIM supporter. How do you feel that the playbook will stack up against the other tablets on the market? Listen, my feeling is this. As long as people don't have to go through six initial replacements before they finally find a device that works, like I have with RIM, all the better for them. It Listen, it's not going to compete against the iPad. We've already established that. Apple, again, is in a realm of its own. Their app store through Apple is ridiculous. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So how do I think it'll stand against up against the other playbooks geared towards businesses? Listen, the average business guy isn't going to know this the difference between the playbook from the HP uh, play, um, tablet that is being released. Touchpad. The touchpad, correct. Thank you. Um, that being said, most of these businesses who are going to invest in the playbook are either going to do so because they're already full-on BlackBerry diehards, which are your lawyers, a lot of them. Real estate agents seem to love BlackBerry for some odd reason. Um, I remember on actually one of my trips where uh, model number five of my curve decided to kick the bucket in Boston. There was a whole little conference of um, women realtors who were all, you know, chomping at the bit about how they all needed to get their Blackberries updated and things of that nature and they all had to have the same phone because the realtor insisted that they all had the same phone and it all had to have black cases and it was ridiculous but point being that people who are loyal to RIM a lot of them weren't so much loyal to RIM they were just loyal to the idea of what it could do because two years ago when Blackberry was the hottest thing off the presses that's what everybody wanted it was part of it the cost for the BlackBerry phones. I think a lot of the times the phones that are the most desired are the ones that cost the most because it's the presumption of what costs more should be a better value. That being said, um, I don't know that it's going to do well against the other tablets on the market. I mean, you've got the Zoom from Microsoft. To me, Motorola. or I'm sorry, Motorola with would have Microsoft equipment inside of it, I believe. Uh, it's going to be an Android device. It's an Android device. Oh, okay. Well, in any event, when you compare it against the Motorola Zoom, Motorola is a dying company. We know that. However, at least Motorola has been around long enough so that there's a certain degree of, well, they must have been in the game for so long for some reason, which is that... While their devices may not have all the jazzy features that you want, they're consistently durable. They're consistently reliable. The phone that I dropped the most out of any phone in my life was my Motorola camera phone, and it didn't take a dent. That being said, could I see a Zoom tablet uh, lasting around longer than a RIM playbook? Absolutely. Well, I'm going to say that the specs match up fairly with the other top tier tablets out there, and when I say top tier, I'm referring to the iPad 2 and the Zoom. Spec-wise, it matches up. Again, we, we go to apps. There's no way this device is going to outsell the iPad 2. There's just no way. I mean, people are lining up for this thing like it's a Lady Gaga concert. You have people in New York City selling spots in line for nine hundred dollars just to time. get this just to get their hands on it the playbook doesn't have that social appeal it, it doesn't have that though it doesn't have those features to just draw you in like 
like Apple, like the Apple devices do. Uh, plus, you know, the marketing for for Apple is just wonderful. I mean, every time you can't go two hours without seeing an iPad or an iPod Touch commercial. So they do a wonderful job of marketing. So much so that even with the iPad 2's shortcomings, and I'm talking about flash support, no SD card, and no 4G, and they, I, last report that I saw over the weekend of release, they sold over 500,000 units. Okay, so it's not going to catch up with that. I think it just it might outdo the HP. I don't know if you I don't know if you can compare it to the Zoom. I mean, uh, spec wise, yes, but the BlackBerry marketplace is is something that really is going to hold it back. And if it doesn't have access to Android apps. It, it, it's not it's not going to keep up and then the iPad again it's just out of the question the iPad is is going to kill the rest of its competitors out there I mean it's going to go through its competitors like Kemba Walker goes through Big East defenses okay so again I think this will be a good device I don't think it's going to get that public reception that maybe Blackberry got and Rim got a, a few years ago when they were you know, owning the smartphone market. So, business side, I think it's good. It's going to allow you to take care of your business needs and allow you some enjoyment on your downtime, but it's not going to compete for that top spot out there. They need to put another billboard up during Major League Baseball season like they did a few years ago. Maybe they can get Derek Jeter to play around on one. Yeah, because so many people watch baseball. Are you kidding me? Well, everybody loves Derek Jeter. I mean, heck, a whole dad just wrote in to ESPN about how he's the greatest guy in the world. Baseball season is good for one thing. Let's take a nap and just waiting for football season to get here. Oh, hater. But let's move on to our next segment of the show. We call this mashup. If you've seen the show before, you know how this works. Five headlines, five answers, and we're going to allow Elisa to go ahead and read the first one. All right. Uh, the Guinness Book of World Records announced that Microsoft's Kinect is the fastest-selling electronics device ever. Yeah, great. Now all we need is some games for it, okay? This, if they don't, if Microsoft and Xbox, if you don't get some games out for this thing, this is going to end up like the Wii. It's going to be sitting off in my corner somewhere collecting dust. Furthermore, can we not have four versions of the same damn game when you do make games? Dance Masters, Dance Central, Dance Dance whatever? I'm flabbergasted. Can I get one game that doesn't have two versions of bowling in it? Because you actually have Connect Sports and then you have Sports Pack that's supposed to be essentially games like shuffleboard that you may want to play when grandma and grandpa and your aunt Bert and uncle Gertrude come over. Mm. It's ridiculous. I'm excited for fight night, maybe. But there'll be another Mike Tyson punch out. True. By next week. Because what? somebody at Microsoft didn't get the memo. Oh, I'm waiting Variety the, of games. I'm waiting on the Jedi Knight game. That's what I'm waiting for. Uh, Facebook hooks up with Warner Brothers to provide users streaming videos for a rental fee of three dollars. Oh well, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see how they keep that from crashing. Cause uh, if you ever played the ground of Farmville, I have. Yes, I hates it. Yeah, I play real games. Um, yeah, that's a, a great feature. Um, but I like to watch movies on my TV. Uh. Next one. iPhones fell back an hour instead of springing ahead. Uh, again? Yeah. Um, the iPhone is supposedly the smartest phone on the market, and it's supposed to be made by the smartest developers on the planet, but they can't figure out this hour ahead thing. I think this has happened more times than Tupac got shot. You know, if that's the worst thing that happens to your iPhone, you'll live. The only people who were greatly affected by it were college kids, and really, how reliable are they to show up to anything on time? Well, it was on a Sunday anyway, so what are they doing? Drinking. Heavily. Probably. Definitely. All Especially right. if you go to Catholic school. Alright, 8-Bit Classic Double Dragon came out for the iPad and iPhone this week. Nobody cares. 
You kidding me? I care. It's eight bit. Love bits. Double Dragon. Eight bit. Who it's over. cares? It's still great. Do you want to go back to scrunchies, parachute pants, and oversized baggy sweatshirts? I want to go back to Double Dragon and Mike Tyson's punch out all day long. Somebody's all day. apparently obsessed with I Love the 80s on VH1 here, folks. Oh, hey. We have high tech for a reason. HD and 8 bit? What? No. Yeah, talk about high tech. You play Farmville. Next! Uh, Mortal Kombat is a big hit at the Game Developers Conference. Who's really surprised by this? But you know what? I think Ed Boon should uh, write a letter to Camcon uh, and thank them uh, for bringing back the fighting, bring back fighting games and making them cool again. Uh, you know, this whole thing with Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter coming back is so 90s. Before you know it, it's going to be Dre Day again. Flawless victory. I already have my copy pre-ordered. I am so excited for it that I've already thrown down 40 bones on it. I did not opt for the bookcases, however. And the X-Ray feature? Brilliant. Way to restore an entire franchise. I'm telling you, this is going to be bigger than you realize, folks. Mortal Kombat is going to set the world ablaze. This is going to be bigger than Call of Duty Black Ops was. I am not going to go that far. Oh, I am <laughs> not going to go that going far. There. You, you want to bring it back to the days of Mortal Monday and all that. but I'm predicting a movie within two years or at least a major theme attraction. I'm probably going to move me in development and it's horrible. Um, but that does about wrap it up for us here at the End User Report. Remember that you can always follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And don't forget you can always send us email at theendusereport at gmail.com. This is Clarence. And this is Lisa. Peace. Bye.